Welcome back to the channel everyone, I'm Ben and this is the 2024 Gibson Victory. Now I did a review on this guitar about two weeks ago and during the middle of that review I made an admission that perhaps I messed up in getting the translucent ebony finish. If you order from the Gibson website you can get the exclusive translucent ebony burst finish, smokehouse burst finish, red wine burst finish, and my personal favorite the iguana burst finish. I'm kind of regretting not getting that finish. What do you guys think? So of course I edited the video, uploaded it online, and a lot of people wrote in and said, yeah, you should have got the Iguana Burst. And honestly, that's what my gut told me. And so of course I called Gibson up and I said, hey, can I please, please, please exchange this model for the Iguana Burst? And they said, sure, no problem. Sent it in. They were even kind enough to pretty much overnight the Iguana Burst to me, or I think it was a two day ship to me. So super quick on the return on that. And that's why I have this guitar here now. So the reason I'm actually doing this review though is for two main reasons. The first is I've gotten a lot of questions and I figured I could answer them in this video. And then second of all is because the translucent ebony burst finish actually hid a lot of the details in the construction of the body of this guitar. And it's kind of weird that I even went with that model because generally when I look for a guitar to review, I try to find some sort of translucent finish so I can look at all the construction details of maybe the tops, how they're matched, or maybe how the tops are attached to the mahogany and where those points of contact are. And honestly, the ebony finish hides a lot of that because it goes right to black when you get about an inch from the corners and the entire backside was actually all solid black as well. So this model definitely fits the MO more for what I like to review and I just think it's a better looking guitar for the style of this guitar. Now before I get to the Q&A stuff, the first thing I want to talk about though is this maple top. We all know that the maple top joins the mahogany bottom and even when you look on Sweetwater or the Gibson site, it's kind of hard to tell what's going on in this region because it almost looks like where the light is hitting it. But what's actually happening is the maple top splits the center of this uh, carve that's on the top. You can see where the light wood meets the dark wood. And that's actually where the maple top runs into this mahogany top. And like I said, it's a little bit hard to see that online, but that's definitely what's going on there. And that's kind of really the only place where you start to see the sheer angle of the maple because everywhere else the maple top goes pretty much to the edge all around the entire perimeter of the guitar. Now I did note in the previous Victory video that I did that the maple top on this guitar is quite a bit thinner than what you'd find on an SG Modern or Supreme or even a Les Paul and that's definitely true as you can tell here. This much of the guitar is mahogany and it's just this little quarter inch that is the maple top. So I don't really know why they made it so much smaller than on their other models that have maple tops. What I am curious about is if you were to get the lower priced model, which is all mahogany, is it one solid mahogany slab or is there like a mahogany cut on top that they then carve to match with the mahogany back so that they could make one style of back and then cut either maple tops or mahogany tops and put them on there? I don't know, I'm just curious about that. Now another thing that's interesting about this finish and the wine red finish actually as well is they all go to a translucence on the sides and the back. So you can see the wood grain on the back here, very nice, as well as on the side. Whereas the other two finishes, the Gibson Exclusive Ebony and the Smokehouse Burst, all fade to black as you get out of the maple top. The sides are all black, the backside's black, the neck is all black. So this really is a better guitar to show off some of these details. And I hope maybe these notes kind of help somebody that's curious about either the Ebony Burst or Smokehouse versus the Wine Red or the Iguana Burst finishes. You'll definitely have to think about that. Do you want to see the wood grain or not? Do you even care? Really, who knows? Another thing I want to point out that has nothing to do with the finish itself is I noticed that the Iguana Burst model here is not set up nearly as well as the Ebony Burst finish that I had previously. And I don't think that has anything to do with this being an Iguana Burst or not. It's just something that I noticed that they've slammed the stop bar here so the strings exit it at such a steep angle that every single one of them is resting against the corner edge here of the tunematic bridge which is no bueno, of course. And then on that note, I think the tunematic is actually up too high because the action is pretty high as well. So I definitely need to do a little bit more setup with this guitar to get it more into my playing style. Now let's move on to the Q&A for some of the questions that people have asked about the victory. And hopefully this will save you some time from scrolling the entire comment section. Now some of the comments ask if I've heard anything about Gibson releasing a tremolo system for their Victory models, and I have not heard a single thing about it, I haven't heard whisperings about it, but I wouldn't be surprised if enough people commented on it that they didn't release some sort of dive bomb system on this guitar here, because even as I commented on my last video, it really doesn't make sense that a guitar like this only has the stop bar option. 
Now a couple other comments point out how this guitar seems to be maybe wholly inspired by PRS success, and one comment goes even so far as to say that the success of PRS has helped revive this model for Gibson. There's definitely no way to prove that or not, but what I think is going on is Cesar, the CEO over at Gibson, I think he's like an 80s metalhead and he's just having the time of his life releasing these like old cult classic Gibson guitars and kind of putting a new fresh spin on it. And honestly, I'm all for it because it's kind of nice to get something new from Gibson that's not just an SG or a Les Paul reissue, even though I love those guitars as well. So we'll see if these stick around. We'll see how much success they are. But right now it looks like some of them are doing pretty good. The 70s and 80s Explorers and Flying Bees have been doing pretty good. So We'll see what happens with the Victory. Now another question I got was from somebody asking if the neck was a little bit wider than what you'd find on a standard 24 and 3 quarter inch 22 fret Gibson. It's a good question and it's not something I addressed when I did my original review. So I did take some measurements. A Gibson SG standard, I got a 1.73 on the first fret and a 2.08 on the 12th fret. And on this Victory guitar I'm getting a 1.75 on the first fret and a 2.11 on the 12th fret. So they're very, very close, nearly imperceptible, I would imagine, to most people. Some people were disappointed with the selection of the pickups that Gibson decided to use, and I can't say I'm disappointed with the pickups that they did decide to use. I just kind of wish I had more specs on them, as nerdy as that sounds. I thought they actually tonally were pretty nice. It was just the fact that I have no idea what's inside of them or any of that sort of construction notes on them that really bothered me. Now another comment I got is asking if the body was a bit more offset than the original Victory that came out in the 80s. And honestly, I haven't touched one of those or played one or done much other than look at research of them online. In my opinion, they looked pretty even with the body, but if it was off a little bit or if they maybe came up with new tooling for this design, I wouldn't be surprised at that either. Now, I did point out in the video that some of the carving is a little bit different, and that's something that I noticed with my eye, but when it comes to the actual offset of it, that one's a little bit harder for me to gauge. Now there's another group of comments talking about the price of this guitar. $2,500 for this model or $2,000 for the solid mahogany body. And I agree, it is a lot of money. I would never disagree with that statement. But some of those comments are saying, well, you could get a cheap Fender or PRS and it's just as good if not better. And that's kind of an interesting argument. I don't really necessarily agree with it because if you look at a American-made PRS or an American-made Fender, which this is an American-made Gibson, they're just high-priced American-made guitars. PRS CE24 is going to cost you about $2,800, $3,000. That's more than this model. Or check out a Fender American Vintage Telecaster. Again, you're talking about the same price as this, $2,500. So yeah, there are cheaper Fenders and there's cheaper PRSs, but they're called Squires and PRS SEs, just like there's cheaper Gibsons, and those are called Epiphones. Anyway, that is my update video on the new Iguana Burst Victory here that I have in my possession. And hopefully that answers some of your questions about the new Victory guitar. Thanks for checking out my video. I appreciate it. And I'll talk to you next time.